Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. I got a lot of great feedback from last week's Lottery Numbers Part 1 video where I showed you how to get your winning numbers into an Excel spreadsheet and have the winning numbers that you picked display red, for example. And I mentioned in that video, if you guys want to see me show how to put the count of the number of winning numbers that you had in the sheet as well, to send me some feedback. Well, tons of you sent me some feedback. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to put that count there. And I'm going to show you how to do a different, like a state lottery system. Like I played some Florida lottery tickets and they're a little bit different from the way Mega Millions works. So let's take a look. Okay. I'm sad to note that I didn't win much in last week's drawing. I did hit the Mega Ball on a couple of my drawings, but, uh, but yeah, that gives, that's like what, six bucks. But anyways, um, I decided to change the Mega Ball conditional formatting to green, and that's pretty easy to do. I just deleted the conditional formatting that I had in there and added a new one, all right? So that's just simply going into conditional formatting, go to manage rules, right? Pick the one you might have in there. I mean, you can edit this and change the color if you want to. I find it's easier just to do this, delete it, especially when I'm, I'm teaching beginners, right? Then just go back to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and then say equal to, and then that guy, and then change the color here. That's all. Now I made that green. I, I want it to show up differently because it's a winner, right? If you get just that number, you got a winner. It's only a couple bucks, but you still got a winner, right? Okay, so how do we get that count there? Well, let's put the word count in there and let's do some conditional formatting here. We'll copy that format. Okay. Now, now you could do a big long if statement if you know how to use the if function, right? You could say if this equals that, or if this equals that, or if this equals that, because you gotta check this number against each one of these spots, and you gotta check this number against each one of these spots. That's a lot of stuff. Or we can use the or function to take a look at the entire range. Now let's take a look at just one situation. Okay. I can come over here with the count and say equals or all right, the or condition says, if any of the arguments inside of here are true, any of them, it'll return a true. Otherwise, it'll return a false. So if I say or, okay, and then this equals, let's just pick one number. Let's just pick that one. Okay, if that equals that, then it'll return a true. In this case, it doesn't. You get a false. That's fine. Let's say I change this to four. And look, now it's true. Okay. That's what or does. Now, I don't want to just check this number against this number. I want to check this number against this whole range. And guess what? You can put a range in here too. Instead of saying if A2 equals J4, okay, let's say if A2 equals this entire thing. Can we get away with that? Let's see. Enter. And I got a false. All right, let's put a four somewhere in here and see if it works. Oh, look at that. Now it goes to true. See that? The or condition works with ranges. I can say if A2 equals anywhere inside that range, then that will evaluate to true. Okay, now that's the first number. What about the second number? Well, I can come over here and I can say plus or I'm going to do the second number this time. This guy equals anywhere in this range. Same thing. Close it up and press enter. Oh, now, now wait a minute now. Now I, I got a two instead of a true or false. What's happening there? Well, if you just do it with one of them, okay, Excel evaluates it to true and false. Now in Excel, false equals zero and true equals one. So as soon as you put multiple of those together, now it's gonna evaluate that to a one. And in this case, that one evaluates to a one and it adds it up to two. See how that works? And you can do the same thing all the way across. You can say, or if this one equals that, or if this one equals that, and so on. Okay. Now this notation is kind of crazy. I, I, whenever I'm dealing with ranges like this, I like to use something called a named range. A named range is where we can say, okay, take this and give it a name. Let's call this name winners and then press enter. Now I've set up a named range. Winners is equal to that range right there. And now I can change my formula that says if A2 equals winners or B2 equals winners, see that? That's called a named range. 
If you want to learn more about named ranges, I cover them in my Excel Expert Level 1 class. I'll put a link to this down below. Now that I've got that named range set up, watches, I can just copy this and go copy and then paste, paste, paste for the other three letters. That's A2, B2, this one will be C2, this one will be D2, and this one will be E2. And press Enter. And since I've got named ranges in place, I can just auto-fill this guy down, double-click, and there it goes. All right, maybe center those. And that will show you all of your winning numbers as the count for that row. All right, you can resort that. Okay, put the winners up top. And I think for this one, for Mega Millions, you have to have at least three or something with the Mega Ball. Anytime you got the Mega Ball, it's a winner. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this column. And we're going to say conditional formatting, highlight cells rules. If it's greater than two, then we'll go with green. That's a winner. And hit OK. And there you go. And so if this guy had a third one, let's say this one's got the 14 in it too. then that one's a winner as well. You can easily see your winners. See that? That's how you set up that count. Okay, uh, there's millions of different ways to do this. I thought of about five different ways I could do this. This one's the easiest one that I can think of to explain. And like I said, I also played Florida Lotto. I just copied the other one. Slightly different rules. There's no Mega Ball in the Florida Lotto. It's just the combination of these six numbers now. So same thing. We'll go count. All right, we'll copy that over here. Where's the Format Painter? Right. And here... We have to do the same thing, but with these six numbers. All right, now, we've already got winners as this, so we can't use the same named range twice in a sheet, so we got to call this one something different. So let's call this one uh, Florida winners or whatever. Or F, let's call it F winners. I like to keep it short. Okay, and then we'll put do the same thing here. It's going to be equals or, right, does this equal any of the F winners, right? Enter, there's my false, okay? And I'll just put a plus in there like that. Let's just copy this whole thing. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then we'll just change these to B. And you could double click on that and click on there, C, watch, double click, D, double click, E, double click, F and then press enter and there you go there's your count this one has none auto fill it down and there you go let's make let's make some winners here let's make this one match up 7 11 we missed 20 it's 21 right <laughs> 32 42 51 we got all but one so we got five winners there and this one again let's see what do we need for uh we need at least two of six to get a free ticket so if this has if this is greater than one we'll make it green right conditional formatting Highlight sales rules, greater than one, make it green. There you go. I think I got like two free tickets out of all the ones I played. <laughs> now, if you want to learn more about these logic functions like and and or and those kind of tricks, I cover that in my Excel Expert Level 3 class. Again, I'll put a link to that down below. Now, if you have not yet watched my free Excel Beginner Level 1 class, go watch it. It's absolutely free. It's over an hour long. gives you all the basics. Or if you got someone in the office or maybe someone at home that, you know, keeps bugging you with this, you know, simple questions like, hey, how do you do this? How do you sum up a column of numbers? If you don't need this stuff, hand it off to someone else. You'll do me a favor, right? And even if they don't buy anything, I still want them to learn Excel, okay? And if they do like Beginner Level 1, you can get Beginner Level 2 for just $1. It's on my website. There's a link. You'll find a link you can click on down below. There's your fast tip video for Excel for today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. So that's it. Want to learn more Excel? Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Stop by my website to watch my free Excel Level 1 course. It's over 90 minutes long, and it covers all the basics. And if you want me to post more Excel videos, I need to hear from you. About 90% of what I do is Microsoft Access, but I'm also a published Excel author, and I love Excel. So if you want to see me post more free Excel videos, post a comment below and let me know. Say, hey, I want more Excel.